interest today, this is an exponential growth function. So again, whether it's owed interest or earned interest, it's going to grow. It's going to grow on itself each time. So we're going to start with an example so you can see how that exponential growth function comes about, how we write that equation. So we have Madison. Madison apparently was very, very smart. She got $10,000 in gift money when she graduated from college. Maybe whoever those people are will adopt us and give us $10,000. She deposits the money into a, an account, which is very smart. It will earn money for her. And it will pay 5% compound interest annually. Interest can be accrued quarterly, semi-yearly, annually. It just depends. Now, I don't want to burst your bubble, but a bank is not going to give you 5% interest. They might give you 0.05%. Okay, if you want 5%, you want a higher interest rate, you're going to be doing some investments and probably in the stock market and things like that. Now, I will tell you, paid interest, right, interest that you owe on a credit card can be up to 20%. So as we watch this grow, I want you to think, like, this is great. She's getting free money, essentially. But on the flip side, if this was money she owed, that would not be good. Okay? So we are going to start off, we're going to look at this a couple of different ways. Find the total amount of money in her account after the first year. So we have to add the interest she earns to her first year initial deposit, which was $10,000. Okay, so in order for us to figure that out, we're going to calculate her earned interest by multiplying the amount she deposited, which was $10,000, times the interest rate of 5%. But we don't multiply by percentages. What do we need to do? Make it a what? A decimal. So we're going to go 1, 2, 0 0.05. If you don't remember how to make that a decimal, then keep in mind you can say 5 divided by 100 because percent is out of 100. There you go. So when I say that, times 10,000, she gets interest after the first year of $500. That is just her interest. That's essentially the free money that she earned. So including her interest, how much money does she have at the end of the first year? She has $10,000 plus $500. So how much does she have? $10,500. That's not a bad yearly investment. Do you agree? Now, we're going to come back to this, but I want you to do this. Underneath the 500, I want you to write 5%. What percent is the 10,000? Very good. This is 100%. So this is equal to our 105%. Okay, just write that down. We're going to come back to that. So we're going to take this information and we're going to fill in this table. What well, we've already know. We already did 10,000 times 0 0.05 uh, equals $500. This is our interest. Well, if we take that, we added it back in, and if we do 10 500 times 0 0.05, and you're going to be using your calculator quite a bit today, so I can say plus 10,000, and then I'm going to say times 0 0.05 again. So now her interest is $525 just for that year. Plus that 10 500 she already had is where this 11 25 came from. Okay? So what would it be here? We've got 11 25 times 0 0.05. What do we get? $551.25. So to start the fourth year, She has $11,576. It's going to round it. You can put 25 cents. You could put 30 cents. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is take a minute with your table, and I want you to fill in these other numbers. Okay. So take a few moments. So this is kind of a pain. So what if I told you there was another way to do this that wasn't 
so tedious. That is where this next piece comes in. So we're going to turn the page. The amount of money in the account increases by a constant growth factor each year. Ladies and gentlemen, in your notes the other day, we talked about the format of an exponential equation, y equals ab to the x, and we said this is that constant growth factor. So what was our constant growth factor on the front? 0 0.05, good job. What was our interest rate on the front? 5%. So how is this interest rate related to this constant growth factor? Right, 0 0.05 is 5%. Okay. So this is what Ashaz was talking about. Instead of calculating the amount of money in the account after each year, we can write an expression and repeated multiplication of the constant growth factor. Okay, so I want you to look what they have right here. $10,000, this was our initial amount. This is actually our A in our equation, okay? Times 1.05. Five. Where did this 1.05 come from? If you flip back over, I want you to look at what we wrote a minute ago. We said $10,000 was our 100%, 500 was our 5%, so this was our 105%. Emma, why does that help us with 1.05? If we move the decimal, we get 1.05. So what this is doing, let's make a little note, this is our 105%. This is finding our 5% and adding back in our initial amount. So instead of, on the front, instead of saying 10,000 times 0 0.05 and then adding that 10,000 back in, if I do 10,000 times 1.05, I automatically get that 10,500. If I take 10,500 times 1.05, I get my 1125. So it skips that extra step of having to add back in what you started with. Do you see that? Now, well, that's fine and dandy. In the second year, we did 10,000 times 1.05 times 1.05 again. That's exactly what I did right here. But another way to write 1.05 times 1.05 is to use an exponent, right? If I multiply something by itself multiple times. So in my third year, I could say 10,000 times 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05, or I could say what? 10,000 times 1.05 to the third power cubed. That's going to make life a lot easier. We could even go through, I know I made you go through 10 on the front, which you're a little perturbed about, and that's okay. But if I wanted to skip down to year six, I could say 10,000 times 1.05 to the sixth and get that amount of money for that year. If I wanted to know in 20 years, I would make this a 20 on my exponent. Okay? Does anyone have any questions about that? So what is the relationship between the number of the year and the exponential equation or expression, right? The year number is what? Here's my year number. How does it relate in my expression? It is the exponent. It is the exponent. So then what would it be for year eight? What would your expression be? If I said, how much money did she have on year eight? What would you write? 
10,000, 1.05 to the, to the eighth power. What if I wanted to write an expression for any number of years? What would we write? 10,000, someone said, times to the T power. Right? And remember to get that, that variable or, ex or exponent, whether it's a variable or a number, use this caret button. We could plug in a 6. We could plug in a 10. We don't need to do that. Um, we could also, what if we didn't use, they want us to use this instead of y. We could say the amount of money is a function of time, right? This is like saying f of x is equal to 10,000 times 1.05 to the t. Okay, so keep in mind they'll give you some other variables. Now keep in mind, just as it grew, if you're earning interest, that's great. But if it's a credit card and it's money you owe, you can get in trouble real, real fast because you're going to get in debt real, real quick. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, if we graph this, Let's see what this looks like in our graph. Go to your calculator. Let's make a graph. What was our function? M of t equals what? 10,000 times what? 1.05. I'm going to use my little caret button down here to the x. We're going to use x instead of t. But I can't see it. Menu for... A, ooh, so it is going up. What do you think this this value is right here? That is our 10,000. That's our initial amount. That's our A. Is this, and we're, we don't have to draw it. That's okay. You can see it here. Is this linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear. Why is it, what makes it nonlinear? Because it is curved due to the what? what? What part of the equation makes it curved? Due to the exponent. All right, a reasonable domain and range. Here's my calculator. Domain is my x's, right? We're going across. Now, look at this function. Does it make sense to have negative years down here? No, if we were to use this graph, we could do control T here, and we could very easily see 10,000. I'll find a nice one. Let's do four is at 12, which is about here. And it's just gonna keep growing. Eight is at like 14, seven, so almost here. 10, is at a little over 16. So this is this is why we did it in the calculator because it's really hard to see the curve here, whereas you can see it really well here. Uh, what would be your domain? Domain is x is zero to what? Zero is less than or equal to t. We're used t instead of x. Does it stop? Does it tell us when her year stopped? No. So we can leave it like that. What about your range? Where does it start? 10,000 is less than or equal to, and they're going to use M of T, or like Ashaz just said, you can flip flop it. M of T is greater than or equal to 10,000. You can also write this one the other way. T is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so how can we apply this? Her future plans includes purchasing a home. She estimates she will need at least 20,000 for a down payment. What year would she have enough? How can we solve this? 
Think about what you did on those tables on your common ratio uh, geometric sequence paper. Good. 20,000 equals... Okay, so how would we solve this? What do we know we can do first? We can't do the exponent first. We're going to have to do the division from your constant, or, well, we call it a constant on linear. This is our initial value, so we know this is 2. How do we figure out what times 1.05 is 2? Well, but then we just have a, a, a an exponent. What are we going to do there? Can we square root it? If we knew what the variable was, yes. What I would suggest, because we don't have the exponent, if we had the exponent, we could do that. What I would suggest is I would just look here at my table and go, oh, look, 20,000, 15 years. All right, um, we're not going to do all of Frank here, but I do want to know if he has 10,000 and he gets 6% interest, what is his growth rate? 0 0.06 or 6%. What's his equation, though? Good, 1.06 to the T. Nice job. Is it starting to make a little bit more sense? All right. So then this is what I'm going to ask you to do. That's all we're going to do on that. I wanted you to see some real life of that. Yesterday, you had uh, that growth and decay paper practice. So if you did not finish that or having gone over a little bit more example of that, I would like you to work on finishing it. Okay, we're going to grade that on Monday.